for March the 25th, 2016, we talk about The Walking Dead 3 announcement, Salt and Sanctuary, and we ask you about your Zone Out games. Welcome to Level 143. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm David Meismith. And I'm Ben Merkel. And you're listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. And that's right, the boys are back in town. Cue audio sting. Do, 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 do. Yeah. No, which isn't to say like, oh, Jala's got no that's that's absolutely not the case. I'm just saying we got we got we got all four of us. Welcome back, Dennis. Just saying yeah, less you. cooties. <laughs> <laughs> We're back at our diversity minimum. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh no! I, I just, I, I, the, the, the words got out of my mouth before I even realized what I was saying. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's great to have you back, Dennis. Yeah, glad to be back. Yeah. So fresh, uh, ready to go. I've been working on my, uh, you know, vocal exercises and everything. That's. I actually, I took some time off to practice my podcasting. <laughs> oh, let's let's see some of them. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> He spent he spent all that time talking into a candle. Yeah, you can't that's, practice that's with a live you, microphone. That's, that's how yeah. you well, contact the podcast spirit. Yeah, that's like the like, Karate Kid way of practicing podcasting. Yeah, wax on, wax off. <laughs> well, you got she shells, she shells by the she shore. Mm-hmm. I think I got that right down. <laughs> Perfect. Why do you Nailed say it. that? Why do you say that like a like a villain from a film noir? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's actually the proper enunciation of all those words. Thank you. Very much. Yeah, no, we've we 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 have drifted away from the from, from the mother tongue. Yes, it, it translates better over audio, um, <laughs> specifically the software that we record on. Um, Haven't they technically that. said that mother tongue drifted away from us? I I don't know. I, I just I threw that thing off like offhandedly. I don't know. Oh. Okay. I don't have the con- <laughs> I don't have the context for that. Yeah, I, I've I've read some things I've said like actually if you uh, look, uh, American English is the more traditional. We're like we're like the, uh, all those like islands and the Galapagos that is still like caveman times. Huh. Just because we just because we stagnated. Yeah, but yeah. That's 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 bizarre is that does that have to do with like linguistic choices or does that have to do with uh does that have to do with the old uh vocabulary because like we have an awful lot of new vocabulary and we we lean on slang a lot sure the the understand the the stuff i've read and greg like i don't know if this was like uh i guess what's uh pop linguistics or whatever uh is uh that <laughs> he's, he's my favorite older relative <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, is, is that a lot of the um, evolution in um, in like English in the UK was driven by the class structure? Hmm. So, like trying to differentiate between different classes, and since that di- wasn't really something that uh, happened to the same degree in uh, America, that it yeah that it stagnated. Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, that's your interesting language factoid of the week. And now yeah. you know. <laughs> I'll have to put in a jingle. Yeah. <laughs> the audio, spoils, uh, audio thing for the boys are back in town. This audio jingle, it's getting a very getting to be a very editing heavy episode. Yeah, like and that hot on the heels of the uh, the Silent Hill 3 episode of Watch Out for Fireballs, which uh, it took me three days to edit. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, God help you. <laughs> not like Wait, three, not, not like a, th- a go ahead. What? Reason? Oh, I just I wanted to go like I want to really put my back into it. Like sure. I, I used all like basically all the music from the soundtrack. I cut in relevant dialogue. I cut in sound effects to do like a bunch of stuff like it is a full on production. And well, that that episode is also three and a half hours long. Whew. Well, I think I think uh, there there's the problem right here. Uh, people generally do not use the back while editing a podcast <laughs> usually it's a much more sedentary pursuit yeah uh, i mean I, I, I stand when i edit but uh but 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 also you may think that i'm speaking uh, euphemistically that is not the case <laughs> yeah no i just uh, i just I, I threw it in there so i don't I, I think i've used up all of my juice on uh 
on on this one here. Um, oh, we we have something to plug here coming up uh, uh, like tonight, I think, as people are listening to this. This is a this is a late take, a hot scoop, if you will. Um, <laughs> our community has organized something called Duck Spring. Uh, you're familiar with Duck Stream, uh, where the you know people from the network have streamed. Uh, in, in order to raise money for the Transactive Gender Center out in Portland, Oregon, um, our community has organized a very similar kind of like sister event to that. Um, and so uh, if you tune in, it is like here this Easter weekend is like 72 hours. I think we have something on the lines of like 15 streaming volunteers, something like that. Um, people streaming just a whole bunch of stuff to benefit this pretty cool cause, including uh, including you, Dennis, right? Yeah, so I um, I have jumped in with a uh, Hearthstone segment that is going to be on Saturday from uh, 6 to 8 EST PM. Mm -hmm. um, and I just, just for fun, I did kind of a gimmick deck using every card in Hearthstone, or mo almost all the car cards in Hearthstone, that transform in some mm -hmm. way. So yeah. excuse the dumb dad pun, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually think I, I wound up on a pretty viable deck like oh. it's it's competitive it's it's doing okay like it's holding its own oh you're, um, you're 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 testing it like you're you're kicking the tires yeah yeah i did and i again going to how you know this the community is awesome i kind of posted into um the slack of the hearthstone thread on what i was thinking about and got some tips on cards i could sub out or, or cards that match the theme better um but i i think the most interesting thing so, so far is that i'll drop one of the like random cards that's in there just because it fits the theme and it transforms something and then watch my opponent just kind of sit there and scratch their head and try to figure <laughs> out what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> is, is that because you're playing off book? Like they just don't know how to react? Yeah. Well, Hearthstone at this point is very codified. Like there haven't been new cards in a while. And so like the best decks are, are you pretty much know what the other person has, right? Right. They're well-defined, yeah. Um, yeah, they're well-defined, exactly. Um, so to see something unusual, especially at a relatively competitive level, um, it just throws people off really hard. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a lot fun. More, oh, go ahead. It's a lot more fun if you, uh, if you, you know, uh, imagine dialogue from like a Yu-Gi-Oh! rerun. <laughs> yes. <laughs> This will be like a drunken monk fighting style or something. <laughs> exactly. Well, and, and the great thing is, like, I've absolutely steamrolled a couple of people. Just like they had no chance because, I, you know, I, I drew the right cards at the right time. Um, so the deck the deck has the capability to be really powerful. It's it's much less consistent than I would like, um, but is is a ton of fun to play. And and like I said, it's, it's been holding its own. So uh, yeah. I'm excited. That's, that's um, on 6 to 8 p.m. on Saturday the whatever that is close to the 28th mm -hmm. is it exactly I, the 28th I, I i believe it might be the 27th uh no it's the 26th 26th there we yes. go to him. so yeah that's so, 26 6 to 8 p.m you can come hang out with me watch me play some hearthstone with a crazy deck mm -hmm. that has lots of transforming cards yeah yeah, and if you want to see the whole schedule of a uh, schedule of events and see what people are going to be streaming, go to uh, duckfeed.tv slash uh, duckspring and uh, and check out uh, the schedule and also uh, throw in some money if you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into the actual show, which we got the usual three for you: uh, the brief, which is our news section; the uh, the multiplayer, which is our listener interaction; and the grind, which is our equivalent of the what you've been playing. So let's do the brief. The brief, where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games around us. Dennis, I'm going to uh, throw to you first. Yeah, so this is this is about a sequel to a game that I have not played yet, but I played the first game in the series, so I feel okay talking about it. Um, the third season of The Walking Dead, the Telltale series, uh, has been announced for later this year, which is uh, exciting. They they intentionally took a year off. I think The Walking Dead season two uh, finished back in 2014, mm -hmm. um, and they've kind of been they, God. They've been doing everything from. Minecraft to Borderlands to just everything. Yeah, uh, Game of Thrones Batman right? coming out this summer. Batman, yeah, everything. <laughs> it's they, they just took all covers. I, I, I'm blown away that they're able to put out that much content, and most of it seems to be pretty high quality. 
um, which hopefully will be the case for this one. So they, they took a took a year off from the Walking Dead franchise. They're coming back to it um, for for the third season uh, later this year. And they are they're promising that things will take an unexpected turn. And this is where I get a little bit out of my depth. So, uh, Ben and Cole, you, you have to support me here. Uh, the way they talk about it is that things at the end of season two went pretty, quote unquote, unexpected already. So people are kind of pondering or confused about how how they'll continue the story after that. So I I did not play season two. I did oh, not cool. finish season two. Um, I played up to episode five and then I just kind of petered out. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, which is <laughs> it's not out of like antipathy or anything. I think I made the mistake of playing it as they were coming out and then I just got distracted as it went. Like gotcha. it's it's still it's still installed on my machine. Um gotcha, but gotcha. uh but yeah, so the like this is going to be a continuation. Like I've seen them talking about like, yeah, keep you know, keep your save files around because you know, this is going to, you know, be unto season two as two was to one. Yeah. Well, and the and the the screenshot for this article shows Clementine. I don't know if this is from season three uh, yeah. as a preview or if it's just lifted from season two, but she looks more jaded and cynical than I've ever seen her. So that's kind of her steez throughout season two. Yeah. Yeah. Which so it'll be it'll be interesting what the turn from from that is. You know. Yeah. They're all. They, they also have. Uh, we we didn't really comment on this when it was announced. I don't think, but like they're in the middle of like their their mid season here too. Like they've got uh, like a mini series um, about uh, about Michonne um, mm-hmm. from the from the comic book uh, and the uh, and, and the television show, um, which I have not checked out yet. I think I'm waiting for it to all come out and go on sale, uh, so I can not peter out on it. Yeah. yeah. So more Walking Dead coming. Yeah. I also petered out on the television show, but I'm still reading the comics. Like it's, but that's you know. how, how, how much is there to catch up on? If you wanted to start fresh on the comics, like that's been going for a long time, right? Yeah. It's uh like, hmm, it's like 23 trade paperbacks right now, Oof. 23 or 24. Like I have, I have all of them. If you, if you would like them, <laughs> if you'd like to borrow <laughs> You know, one of the um, you know, I, I, I lend comics. That then that, that that's a thing. Uh, yeah. They're they're pretty quick reads. Um, but like the first two omnibuses, you know, it's they're they're substantial. They're like a thousand pages each. Wait, so oh like, how much time has passed? I I feel like I'm kind of surprised there's that much story out of zombies. Oh, it's years. Yeah, like it's y- yeah, it's it's like years at this point in the comics. Huh. That's but, the, but, the, but, but they're but they're like you know time skips and stuff like that it's yeah but yeah l- l- let me know let me know if you're down with that yeah I'd, I'd actually be interested yeah cool yeah so i saw this one as well and i figured i figured somebody would jump on it any other thoughts on walking dead season three like ben since you didn't play season two just kind of like out of out of apathy like how does this make you feel so I think my big hesitation for starting season two was uh, similar to like the issue you had where I didn't want to I, I didn't want to play it bite size because at least with the first one, I know I played and beat that game in a weekend, like all five episodes. And so I knew I'd probably if the quality maintained, then I would probably want to do the same thing. But also I was worried that the quality would probably dip or, you know, since it was kind of a rush sequel, maybe. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Um I, I have heard very little about it, so I might be interested in picking it up and playing it at some point in time, season two, and then. But I would probably still wait on season three for it to completely be out before I would play it. Yeah, yeah. Which wouldn't happen to like midway through next year, probably. Yeah. Although I don't know, like Telltale's been killing it with like releasing stuff on time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, I, I don't know how they keep up the quantity and quality that they do, but it's it's impressive. They're a big studio, like like the, the, the I think that their staff like numbers in the hundreds. Wow, I, I mean I believe it. I wonder how many of them are writers. I don't know. They would have to. I mean, given the kind of games they make. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just Just one guy doing the all the one. That sounds cool. <laughs> the, oh yeah, like I forgot the Batman one was a thing. It feels like whenever a new Telltale, Telltale game is announced, especially for a new property, my eyes just kind of gloss over. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, I just assume there's a Telltale game for everything, but not like the stuff you want, like you know, like the Telltale, like Venture Brothers Telltale game. Yeah, which is which yeah. is what I want. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> 
Oh man, Ben, how about you? What's uh, what's your story? Yeah, so originally I was going to do the same story, but then I saw Dennis picked it as well. Um, so a runner Gosh. ups, yeah, a runner up story is uh, they recently had the 2015 uh, Board Game and Geek Awards, uh, and for like best board games. Um, huh. So I did I did not know that that was a thing, but the winner was Pandemic Legacy. Uh, Season one, which uh, right now is currently the number one board game on Board Game Geek. It took that over for Twilight Struggle and Terramisca. So, hmm. so it's kind of maybe not a surprising win, but apparently that game's really awesome. That might be something I play soon. I don't know if I'll talk about it here though. But yeah, I, I mean, do I know? I know a lot of people who are playing it, and it sounds okay. pretty neat. Like the actual game of Pandemic doesn't sound that interesting to me. Um, mm-hmm. but, uh, but like anytime there's a legacy twist added, not, anytime that one other time a legacy twist was added, <laughs> it seemed really cool. You yeah. know, you're doing a forward looking anytime. Cause you know, yeah. this type of game is going, it's a genre now like that. Yeah. Was risk the first one or was pandemic risk? Uh, was the first yeah. One. Risk. Risk. Yeah. Was. So that's, yeah. that's birthday genre mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, or, go ahead. So apparently the guy who designed both risk legacy and pandemic legacy is making a third game that's supposed to come out this year, but it's also going to be a legacy type game, but it's its own theme. It's not going to be tacked onto another game. Huh. So that'll be interesting. Legacy, legacy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the changes change every time you play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Huh? Well, that's uh. Oh, like were were, did, are, were there any other uh, any other awards handed out? Like, are there different categories? <laughs> Yeah, so there's a lot of different categories. The other big winners were Code Names, which is kind of like a party game. Yeah, that's, um, that's fun. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that, that's a pretty good game. I've played it a couple times. Uh, Seven Wonders Duel, which I'm not familiar with. I'm familiar with Seven Wonders, but not the variant of Duel. Um, and then Mysterium is another game, which was uh, based off a European game. It's like a, a weird like interpretation game, but it's it, I haven't played the American version, but I played the other one. It's pretty fun. So. Hmm. Well, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, David, how about you? Sure. So there's a a uh, rumor out of um, a actually I didn't look up what the what the media is. I guess a online like um, a Japanese uh, news website that the Wii U console is going to uh, stop production in uh, this year. In order to uh, make way for the uh, new uh, Nintendo uh, toy, yeah, the uh, the NX, yeah, yes. No, this is this is out of Nikkei, which I think is a Japanese financial uh, publication. If oh, not, is that what it is? Yeah, okay. if, if if not like uh, um, like the actual finance financial institution, like out there, like the, like their equivalent of the, of the Nasdaq. Uh, but I am not I am not positive on on either front. Sure, sure. So what so, is the um, Nintendo toy? Huh? What is the Nintendo toy? Sorry, that was me being uh, snarky about oh, okay. <laughs> the quality of uh, Nintendo's uh, video game console. Sorry, I <laughs> I, to- I I misinterpreted. It. I thought they were switching up and doing something else. So sorry, we're going back to card games again. <laughs> yeah. No. Huh. So so yeah, this is like the like the new one's going to be the NX. This is the one that's like we're not sure if it's a handheld or if it's a, if it's a console. If it's like a some some kind of weird app distribution thing for mobile um really nothing at all is known about it but like the timing that they've laid out here kind of implies either that they've made all of the wii u games they want to sell or sorry, sorry all of the wii mm-hmm. u's that they want that they, they anticipate being able to sell and so like they expect that stock to hold them over or just like there will be no nintendo consoles on the market until like this comes out because like they're going to they're probably going to announce the nx sometime this year um and unless it's going to come out this year like that is a uh you know that's not a lot of time for them to get their house in order so yeah yeah so the the article i'm reading um the polygon version i'm sure it's everywhere um is kind of, kind of seems to imply that maybe this is due to uh crappy sales for the uh wii u um, do you know, like, like how many PlayStation 4s or, uh, Xbox Moons or whatever have gotten, um, sold? <laughs> sold? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure how many. I think that it is on the order of, uh, 
like the like the mid tens of millions, like forty millions, maybe. Okay, it's a lot. Yeah, because the number this is giving is apparently there's been twelve point six for the Wii U. Yeah, and the PS4, um, as of January sixteen, has sold uh, thirty five point nine. Okay, um, and I think that the the, the Xbox One is uh is 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 tailing the ps4 the ps4 is uh currently winning sure um whatever whatever winning is but it's, uh, it's currently larger yes it, like there are currently more ps4s extant um yeah this is a bummer because like i like my wii u like there's good stuff to play on it all of it made by nintendo but like that shouldn't surprise anybody who's been alive for the past 20 years yeah i yeah. I, uh, I I wonder if you can do the math because you know like a rationale for buying the Wii or the Wii U has has been in the past like oh I'm spending less on the console, so if now you kind of do the math adding up the buying a console more frequently, um, if it, if it still is a better proposition price wise than than other consoles. Yeah, yeah. I yeah th- this was yeah something that kind of struck me like. I feel like this could at some point uh, come back to bite them because they kind of did the same thing with the uh, 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 3DS. What what, 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 what do you mean? What's the same thing they come out with like the the new 3DS all of a sudden or whatever? I mean, they did that same thing with the the DS Lite and the DSi. Like they've they've, they've, they've always uh, iterated. But those were uh, all... You could play any game on any of them, right? Uh, I mean, there are probably as many new D- new 3DS only games available right now as there were DSi only games. Okay. Yeah, and it was it was like roughly the same timetable. Okay. I don't know what it is about about uh, both Nintendo and Apple that has people so eager to like just prognosticate their death and almost kind of like take glee. <laughs> I'd say it's companies with uh really really good products and really really uh hostile um eventual uh, treatment of their customers hmm. no i i you know i i think i think it's just people who need to t- you know <laughs> it's companies that need to be taken down a peg i don't i don't dislike apple but i do take umbrage with any company that has a genius bar <laughs> <laughs> that's douchey but like well, <laughs> i don't know well i mean the problem is they don't serve booze <laughs> hmm. I couldn't order a single genius at this bar. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! I, 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 all I want is one Enrico Fermi. Can you get that for me? <laughs> God damn it! You guys make shoddy, overpriced products. You can't get me a single Enrico Fermi. What good are you? There's no wonder Steve Jobs died. You can't do anything right. <laughs> <laughs> slip, slip, slamming. The teenager, the teenager just goes running, crying out of the store. <laughs> yeah, it's his first job, his first day on the job. Oh. Yeah, I'm excited about that new iPad Pro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be getting one. Yeah, yeah. Is uh, it that that is was that a step down in size? Am I remembering that right? It is smaller than the gigantic iPad Pro, which is about the size of a coffee table with no legs. All right, so let's let's <laughs> guess on how long it will take to have an iPhone that is bigger than the iPad. Like they're going to cross at some point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that, I just want a smaller Mac. Is why I want them to make. I mean, the MacBook it, One is pretty is pretty tiny. Oh really? Wait, I I thought they I thought like the smallest they had was like um like high fifteen inches. No, no, like the like they've got uh, an eleven inch Air, which is really bad. Okay, um, and, then, not... and then like a, like the the twelve the twelve inch like MacBook. Uh, it's, it's just called the MacBook, but it's the uh, we call it the MacBook One. Um, oh, I po- guess that is the... I must miss that on the website. <laughs> yeah, no, like they like the, the the majority of the laptops that they sell are are within the twelve to thirteen inch range. Ah, huh. okay, yeah. Oh, I don't know how we got there from here, but um, or here from there. But uh, I'll go ahead and do mine uh, real quick. Uh, so uh, I think a while back I talked about when, uh, oh gosh, uh, Chunsoft uh, announced the third entry in the Zero Escape series, the yeah. follow up to uh, to Virtue's Last Reward. Uh, here's the cool thing: Axis, the publisher, has uh, has announced its release date uh, and the systems that it's coming to. So it's coming out at the end of June, uh, June twenty eighth. Uh, for the PlayStation Vita and for the uh, for the 3DS, 
Uh, but uh, something that is unexpected is that it's actually going to be coming out on Steam shortly after that. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah, so that's kind of neat. Like, it makes sense, right? Like, if half of the if half of the platforms that you're releasing your game for are being neglected and killed by their by their creator, it probably makes sense to like go to Steam, which is the uh, which is the equivalent of like launching your game into space on a satellite. So we'll always be there. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is uh, this is kind of cool, and I wonder if they're going to dang and rob it and actually you know make the earlier entries available on that as well like to make it a uh, to make the, the the full saga available that's just speculation but it seems like it would make sense would they have any disincentive to do that i don't know development time cost yeah yeah i guess i am I, in my mind anyway the, the, it seems to me like a relatively simple game um obviously the you know there's a lot of in, intrigue and complex stuff that comes out of it but the mm-hmm. actual like coding piece of it seems to me like it would be relatively easy to zip around from platform to platform yeah i don't know like maybe maybe they're looking into it cool not not positive but like a lot of japanese publishers fucking love steam and it seems to make sense so like i kind of had a sense of this but i i I didn't i i couldn't confirm it until uh polygon did this interview um with uh with the creator of the series like it's way more popular in america than it is in japan (laughs) Really? Yeah. No. Oh, hmm. oh huh. yeah, and 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 that's why uh, that's why he almost wasn't able to get the third one made was because huh. like there was there was just like next to no interest on the uh, on the home front. That that hmm. blows my mind. Yeah. Interesting. So I'm excited, and I'm going to try and fast track another playthrough of Virtue's Last Reward so I can get back up to speed. Stream it. I mean, I can't do that. It's on a. It's it's, it's on, on Vita. It's on Vita, or um, I have it on 3ds. We'll get you a GoPro. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't want to do that <laughs> yeah um and there are trailers and stuff but i'm not going to watch them because i've already seen a, a, a list of the characters or at least their portraits and uh that was enough of a spoiler you you said you recognize some from previous games right yes okay interesting yeah because i looked through and i didn't recognize jack shit so well they've got a new style which is actually really nice it's kind of a more uh like westernized almost like uh gothic kind of kind of look to it like it reminds me of uh like castlevania portrait it's gone a bit. it's gone from anime to hanna barbera i i don't know <laughs> if i'd go that far <laughs> but yeah no i'm i'm jazzed like i like i i knew it was going to be summer but i guess i didn't realize like summer was in two months time moves fast man yeah is there going to be a duck summer <laughs> I don't know. Maybe who knows? We should definitely do a duck fall. <laughs> but like, duck, like the duck stream is uh, is is duck fall. That that you know, it's like November. Although I guess that that's not really winter, guys. I don't know. All of this is arbitrary, yeah. <laughs> and whatever decision I make, people are going to like fucking rub my balls about it. So. <laughs> that's why we're here. Yep. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer where we ask you a question and you answer it. Dennis, what is the question that you asked the nice people? Uh, I'm sorry, what? I spaced out there for a second. <laughs> what is ah, the see what I, there? I do. <laughs> uh, no, so I asked about your favorite um, flow games, with flow being defined as a game that kind of lets you find a rhythm um, without really needing to invest a bunch of mental energy so that you can think about other things or just not think at all. Yeah, so I'm going to pick us up with Roop here, who writes, Might be a dull answer, but when I want to zone out, I put on some music or a podcast and play Counter-Strike Go, Rocket League, or some driving game like Dirt Rally 3, etc. It blows my mind that you would do a multiplayer game. On this. <laughs> like, I feel, I, whenever I'm part of a team, I, like, I feel like I have to be so on that, uh, that that's a surprising answer for me. He must just be really good at video games. M- maybe, or maybe he just like lone wolves it. And he just wants uh, to, he, he he just wants the uh, the mindless scrum, deathmatch, no team. <laughs> I can't I kind of like imagining though that way actually means this in the same way that there's Hitman Go, there's a uh, Counter Strike variant of Go. <laughs> oh, like a competitive one that that might actually be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just imagining Agent Forty Seven playing the game Go with somebody else. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's that's what they made. It made like, like a that. variant of of like. Japanese was isn't that like Japanese chess or checkers or something? I, I mean, it, it's a uh, uh, like it's Chinese maybe. Yeah, like Chinese, like Chinese chess, although somehow more complex. 
Like it, it like so that news story about that computer that's going to one day ruin us all, um, it really plays up. Like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but like the deep learning kind of stuff, like that's fascinating and terrifying a little bit. Uh, but no, like there, there, uh, I think there is a lot of maybe building up of Go, but I don't know a lot about Go. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I think that like Hitman Go and uh, Tomb Raider Go are named that because they're mobile. Okay, so yeah, I, I thought they were like. We can agree to disagree on this one, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get anything right. Um, let's see here. Uh, David, what does Amanda say? Sure. Uh, Amanda says uh, Geometry Wars is great for zoning out, but the ultimate one for my childhood would have to be the first Tony Hawk Pro Skater. I know for sure that whenever I hear Scott music, my mind turns off too. Yeah. <laughs> I just know that for me, the zoning out playing Tony Hawk was like botching a trick on the first ramp, restarting the level, botching a trick on the first <laughs> ramp, restarting the level. It's like, no, I'm going to get this double backflip off this tiny little ramp on my first try or else I'm not continuing with the game. And then I would just play in that loop for an hours on end. <laughs> I just think of air, airport hangar and uh, rage against the machine. <laughs> <laughs> definitely um uh, i don't know like i like zoning out to still like to tony hawker i liked doing that because i would find myself just kind of accidentally with no real conscious effort in the middle of some kind of just like massive combo that i have no idea how i got into it or how i'm going to get out of it <laughs> yeah ben what does mikhail say Mikhail says, lately Rocket League plus Sinead O'Connor creates a kind of nice flow state for me, particularly when playing hockey mode uh, because of the way the pucks grind to her tones. uh, Helps me duck out human land and spring into an alternate reality of sportive Eggman and gaudy automobiles. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Uh, I don't understand me, one lick. <laughs> yeah. Helps me be present to set aside hints of future streaming into my consciousness. Hmm. I need to go back and listen to Sinead O'Connor. <laughs> Sinead? Sinead? I can't I, pronounce that either. I've always heard it as Sinead, but it, it, that that seems like one of those tricky words that if you actually pronounced it like it's supposed to, it, it just it would be... I don't, I don't think we have the right disposition. Sinead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sinead. <laughs> um... Yeah, that's uh that's that's another vote for Rocket League. That shouldn't mm-hmm. surprise me. But I feel like this has to be the most relaxing rocket based game ever created. <laughs> <laughs> they must be playing a different game than I'm playing. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Huh. Oh uh, Ollie Ollie says, uh for him, pro evolution soccer. If you get good at the game, you play it on instinct. Instinct. Uh I once graded papers while uh, continuing a league campaign. I mean, I'm not saying I graded them well. <laughs> Did you, why, why does my paper just say goal? <laughs> <laughs> That's way more exclamation marks. It looks like you went all the way like off the off the edge of the page. Yeah, yeah. and onto this other paper that was next to it. <laughs> <laughs> and stapled on, yeah. <laughs> it's an anime. No, 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 Timmy. That doesn't say goal. That says goal. <laughs> Inflection is everything. No, this is like the speed run where you you play like Zelda and Mario or Castlevania and you know whatever at the same time. Yeah, going back and forth. Well, this is that for uh, for real life. Yeah, imagine uh, imagine how much easier those speed runs are going to be with the Oculus, where you get Zelda in one eye and Mario in the other. Oh God, <laughs> I'm having seizures already. <laughs> yeah, I just threw up. I, <laughs> I edited it out, but I threw up at the idea of that thing I said. Uh. <laughs> Um, Paul, I believe this is a new Paul, um, writes in saying, sometimes I find I can zone out uh, to uh, to session mode in Rocksmith 2014, either with guitar or bass. Yeah, it tells me the game has taught you how to play correctly. Like, yeah. So so at that point, it it becomes guitar karaoke. Yeah, like that and and we've reached our um our our quota of pauls so no more pauls need yeah. <laughs> it's the new pauls club yeah <laughs> um, uh david what does sam say sam says dungeon crawl stone soup sometimes the sensation of dying over and over again is what i crave unfortunately sometimes i succeed which means playing the game compulsively for five to eight hours until i win of course there's no audio in the game i put on podcasts 
Hmm. That is a game that I see on sale sometimes, but I, I like knowing that it's a roguelike kind of scares, scares me off. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. It's apparently uh, free and open source. Oh. Maybe it's just the console versions of it that I see on sale. I don't know. Huh. No. That's an interesting concept to have an open source video game, though. Mm-hmm. I, well, I, mean, I mean, like, like for roguelikes, like Net, NetHacks, uh, big time open source. Yeah. And like bigger, bigger, bigger publishers or especially uh, companies that have been around since like old PC days will open source their old games after they can like no longer make money on them. Would you consider Gary's mod making Half-Life open source? Like, is that, does that count? Is that the thing? I, I actually, I don't know. Like, I, like Valve has made the source engine, like software development kit open. Like, hmm. like those tools are available to people for free. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Ben, what does Phil say? Phil says, lately for me, it's been Stardew Valley. It's an incredibly peaceful game that feels good. Other than that, it's normally a loot game such as Destiny, The Division, Diablo, basically anything that involves destroying a large number of minions for the chance at some shinies. (laughs) (laughs) Actual minions from the movies? Yeah. Let's hope so. Play that. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure that's a that 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 is a flash game on Newgrounds if Newgrounds does not like redirect to some (laughs) kind of you know ad squatting thing at this day and age. It's a it's a Gary's mod. Um, but it's yeah, it's uh, kill all minions and take the insides of their wallet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Stardew Valley. Uh, unfortunately, I've 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 not had a chance to play that one just yet. Ah, um, somebody that, somebody gifted it to me. I really need to look into that. I I love uh I love the old Harvest Moons, but I just haven't been able to get into just the game games that don't have a uh explicit uh like goal or you know what i mean i mean more more money equals better than you can make your own goal yeah except uh you know ain't ain't nobody got time for that there's (laughs) there's explicit goals in that game yeah is there you can take like tracks and stuff okay oh well that that's kind of cool yeah no it's like a like a modern a modern restreaming when i said somebody gifted that to me i mean i mean john thank you john (laughs) Yeah. Uh, by by the way, uh, David, check your uh, uh, f- first off, happy birthday, um, and second hey, off, thank you. And, so, and <laughs> sorry, I didn't say it earlier. We were distracted with pre-recording stuff. Um, also, check your Steam account. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I mean, not right now. Just uh, at, at, at some at <laughs> no, some point. No, right now. Yeah, if, if 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 you want to, I'm not I'm not the boss of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> uh, Dennis, what does Jeff say? Jeff says traditionally any action RPG. Diablo 3 has been a mainstay for years and just keeps getting better. Honestly, uh, I've played Dark Souls and Bloodborne to the point that it's a real Zono game as well. Uh, and sometimes The Sims 3. I basically keep myself pretty busy. <laughs> yeah, Diablo 3 is, is really good for zoning out too. Yeah. Again, it has, it has that loot kind of... Uh, just just getting shinies is nice. Yeah, Jeff, Like aside from Dark Souls, you just listed my depression games. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Diablo three is a depression game, or uh, like 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 any of those like action RPG loot fast uh, kind of things? Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Said, no, you played Diablo three. You've yeah, been very I... silent on it when I talked about it. <laughs> yeah. No, no, but in anything that is that, that is like that that is a that that, that that is a precision engineered dopamine machine. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Huh. Let's see. Or I'll pick up with uh, with David, who says Stardew Valley for me right now. Once the opening music kicks in, I can feel the stress of the day start to fade. It's a nice, no stress atmosphere uh, that I know I'm going to enjoy. By which we mean it's a horrible simulator of farming. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! Well, no, it was actual farming. Gosh, <laughs> that's why we do games about it. Like you can go around and pet your pet pet your chickens to make them lay bigger eggs. Because they love you more. No, that actually does work in real life. Oh, I mean, if you sing to them and stuff. <laughs> or is that plants? Am I thinking of tomatoes? <laughs> Dennis, did I get tomatoes and chickens mixed up again? <laughs> Happens to the best of us. <laughs> it makes ordering a chicken parmesan very confusing for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see here. David, what does Christopher say? Christopher says, you're truck simulator too. Audio surf. And Super Mario Brothers three. That's a bunch of exclamation marks. I think maybe he's doing a wizard goof. 
Probably. With wizard goof? Like of, you, of the movie. turned into a wizard? Yeah, wizard tricks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um going back to old Super Mario Brothers is uh is fun. That's why I like uh that's why I really like that uh, there's virtual console stuff on the uh 3DS. Yeah. yeah. So have, have any of you guys played Euro Truck Simulator? Nope. Mm-mm. The idea of it makes me very anxious. <laughs> See, I don't like what what is the idea? Because it's it's a game that like I have no context for, but that is like what I think one of the like better selling games on Steam. You drive a truck across Europe. Okay. Like like you're, you're you're like a semi <laughs> you're like a semi truck driver, and most most of the uh, and the reason this this instills anxiety in me um, is, uh, is is because like most of the footage I've seen of it is like somebody like Austin Powersing their like trying to turn turn their rig around on a four lane <laughs> street <laughs> like those type oh, man. those type maneuverings like oh boy like I I'm trapped here this is my home forever now <laughs> <laughs> I might as well like, lay out a welcome mat and like just get 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 a post digger. So I can, so I can put up a mailbox. <laughs> huh. It becomes Russia a Hoover Town be a simulator. <laughs> yep, Mad Max will find me here in the in the future. Yes. <laughs> hmm. Let's see here, Ben. What does Michael say? Michael says Warframe requires carefully engineering weapons and characters in preparation for battle. Once in a mission, the omnidirectional movement and hordes of baddies streaming uh, and really let you fly through it. So heavy on the prep, but easy to actually play. Yeah. Mm. Fair enough. I'm not familiar with the omnidirectional movement. I wonder if that's the, uh, is that like the treadmill that I've seen GIFs of? <laughs> Maybe. No. Oh, he's, he's actually playing it with a treadmill while he's zoning out. It's, it's incredibly yeah. relaxing. He's got the Oculus on. He's just holding his arms out. <laughs> um no like so that's kind of funny because like i was expecting this the way like, that that description makes it sound like uh zone of the enders hmm. when in yeah. reality this looks like a like a dead space or gears of war gears of war kind of thing oh have you have you never played it oh god no oh yeah yeah i uh i'm not sure i would have said it's like i would have uh picked that solution but zone of the enders strikes me as like a fairly reasonable i mean it's like a uh, third person shooter with with uh with you know some parkour bits hmm but no like explicit flying uh no but uh, if if it's been a, a long time since I played but I want I want to say like a lot of like like power slide type things and mm. you know like double jumps and you know those sorts of things yeah so may- maybe maybe a, a little bit like uh Devil May Cry with like uh, uh what what was that uh game for the uh PS3 with just like the the ultra power slides? Oh, uh, Vanquish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to get back and play that. Yeah, Platinum Man. Platinum Man. Huh. Yeah, that's a that 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 is a newer game than I expected. Neat. Um, and then finally here. Oh, I lost my place. Dennis, what does Tom say? Yeah, Tom says, currently digital uh, trading card games like Hearthstone and Hex, but the most intense version of this I've ever experienced was with the original Lou Mines on the PSP. I still remember sitting down on the couch at my brother's house to play a game and emerging some amount of time later <laughs> with, with the water flower light skin unlocked for maxing out the score at 999,999,999. <laughs> So and feeling like I hadn't blinked in several hours. <laughs> you got you got a blunk, son. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean you didn't blunk? Come on. That is that is that is impressive. <laughs> yeah, lumens is fun. Mm-hmm. Luminous, I think, is uh yeah. On the original PSP too, because like that battery didn't last for shit. Yeah. <laughs> I must have been playing it uh plugged in and charging. Yeah, like I did with my game gear. Mm -hmm. (laughs) oh so we're on a bit of a time crunch right now uh so i'm going to cut us off thank you everybody for writing in if you would like to participate uh in these go ahead and uh let us know um uh, by looking at that uh at the facebook page facebook.com slash the level podcast on tuesday afternoons before we uh bow out of this though why don't we kind of go around and give ours um so i'll do mine uh which is I really like a number-based puzzle game, such as Drop 7 or 3s. 
Mm-hmm. Would uh, Minesweeper fall into that category? Uh, Minesweeper makes me anxious. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I, I think that if they chose a different metaphor, I would have like, no, no, it's just, uh, I like Minesweeper is never intuitive for me in the way that like something that provides as much input as, uh, again, other drop seven or threes, um, uh, uh does. Yeah. Gotcha. So my, Minecraft or sorry, Minecraft, uh, Minesweeper is mine. Although Minecraft could probably be mine as well, except I never, never got into it as much as I uh, thought. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, Minesweeper, like I, I kind of learned the vocabulary of it or learned to read it. And I would just, I would insomniac, like stay up until like 2 a.m. Um, just click, click, click. And my roommate, like after we, you know, uh, were done living together, uh, it came up. He's like, oh yeah, I could always tell when you were starting a new game of, of Minesweeper because your clicks would get way faster and then they'd <laughs> slow down progressively <laughs> to a drip. And then they'd speed up and I'd be like, ah, oh, he just either lost or won. <laughs> um, which made me like the the uh, Chinese water torture of clicks. <laughs> Wait, that, that, that implies that your roommate at any point was not playing uh, World of Warcraft. Uh, well, that, that is true. Um, the other one, just since it's in the picture for this question, is Bit Trip Runner. Oh, yeah. That one is fantastic uh, as a flow game. God help you if you try playing it on PC first and then switch over to TV where there's a tiny bit of lag oh, yeah? because it completely throws you off. Um, but otherwise like playing, playing on the computer was, is, is very soothing. That seems like a kind of game that would have uh, that would have calibration. Yeah. It, I, I never saw it. Huh. Um, granted it, I got it through PlayStation plus, so I, I wasn't looking too hard for it. I just, but, you know, the first <laughs> couple levels I didn't, I was like, the second things got a little bit faster. I was like, ah, this is timings off back to back to PC. I bet you that game's fun on Vita. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. So I'm, I'm surprised you didn't say, uh, oh, uh, pinball. I'm, I'm way too intense about pinball, man. Way too intense about pinball. I'm just waiting for you to get pinball on the Oculus Rift or whatever. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how that would work. You are the ball. No, no. You, you, you actually physically have a pinball machine there. Oh, interesting. <laughs> you just take into an arcade with a pinball machine. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Actually... <laughs> I would I would pay for arcade simulator, yo, know, twenty twenty. I, I mean that, that that's that that's what a lot of people thought. Uh, like v- playing regular non three D non VR content was going to be like on uh, on uh, PlayStation uh, VR, but instead they've just got the big screen right in front of you that you can size up and size down. Yeah. Huh. The, the, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, who hasn't gone yet? So. I- I have not. Uh, for for me, I think it would be uh, RuneScape. I haven't played it in a long time, just because like it's it's one that unfortunately, being an MMO, you can't exactly just drop in and drop out of it. But I still miss it a lot, just for it, the degree to which it was like a a ga- game you you could kind of have some progress uh, on. You know, kind kind of like uh, like was said, you know, get the the loot dopamine drip while mm-hmm. being like something you could straight up like watch on watch TV while playing or whatever. I mean, did uh did 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 WoW ever do that for you? Um to a certain degree, but I mean, WoW is a dramatically faster paced game. Hmm. So understood. So I mean, yeah, you you know, and and you know, and WoW you're actually, you know, clicking abilities and stuff like that whereas uh runescape to a significant degree is auto attack only hmm interesting yeah uh ben round us out uh single player says sudoku on my phone multiplayer dr mario (laughs) a multiplayer zone out game yeah Can, 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 can you go into more detail for that for dr mario Oh no, but but I just like like why you would want to zone out in, in a in a social context. Uh, I I just remember playing a lot of Doctor Mario, and it you, it, you it's just like an altered mind state. You know, it's <laughs> like it's similar to Tetris. You know, like you I don't know. It's just, it's hard to describe. Like your mind just becomes so focused on what you're doing, and if that becomes yeah, I don't know. It's weird. It's zoning See, out. <laughs> See, I I just remember you 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 saying in the past you you had the uh what the the bet with some of your students show you'd give them an a if they could beat you at dr mario yeah i don't and know if so, I ever... so i just imagine you being like 
Dude, of course I zone out when I'm talking to my students. People don't actually listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They hmm. think they're people. <laughs> huh. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for uh, responding to that. I already gave you all the stuff, so let's go on to... The Grind. The Grind. And David, since you have to go to work here shortly, give us a um, a, a, a brief uh, explanation of what you've been playing over the past week or so. Sure. Uh, so uh, still been um, grinding on The Division. Um, I think I'm about a third of the way through. Um, the third of the way through the single or the, like the quest content. Yeah. Um, I, as far as I can tell, it's, uh, so, uh, Destiny did this the same way. And I, I guess I should explain this cause I'm not sure if it's apparent to, you know, someone on the outside where pretty much by the time you're da- done with the, uh, story mode, you're at um, you're at max level, okay. And then um, you know you're pretty much right into like end game, you know, grinding and uh, like, raiding and stuff like that. Like alternate progressions. Is there a, is there an equivalent of light in the division? Um, I don't think so because if I remember correctly, there've been a uh, number of articles and stuff. I've seen like advocating that there could be, although it's worth considering that light actually isn't light in uh, Destiny anymore. I, I knew I was going to be nitpicked on that the second I said light. Like, actually, sure. it's moved okay. on to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I just wasn't sure which one you meant. Yeah, no, um, but but it, but I just mean like something else that is that 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 is seen as like you know it's it's alternate progression. It's not straight up levels, but it's some other number that you're trying to make bigger. Sure. Yeah. Um. I, I think they keep it fair, fairly uh, straight on, although, uh, you know, pretty, pretty conventional. Although I think I get the idea that the uh, loot system doesn't open up uh, the, as much until endgame in terms of like, um, I've not, I'm not really seeing uh, any weapons with special abilities yet. Uh, so I think that's kind of it. Uh, part, part of the the most noteworthy thing is uh the the dead zone gameplay which is it's um, like wild west pvp yeah yeah so it's um it's you know high end pve except that friendly fire is turned on and anyone can like kill you and take your stuff and uh the convention is this takes place in like um i don't know New York, like I think Rockefeller Center and like the uh, New York Public Library and like whatever district of uh, Manhattan that is. It's like Midtown. Midtown. Yeah. Okay. Midtown. Uh, and it's um, the kind of the convention is that they've uh, walled this area off and like that's the area that's just kind of gone, gone to hell. And because of that, um, all the items in there are too too infected for you to just like straight up loot. So um, in order to uh, use the items, you have to call in extraction so that the items hmm. can be taken to decontamination. Which basically what that means is in order to once you've you know killed enemies and survived and have gotten your loot, you have to. Um, you know, go to an extraction point and basically you have like, uh, I think it's like like 60 seconds where tons of waves of enemies attack and everyone in the zone knows that you're trying to escape with loot. Okay. So it's basically, try to, it's kind of, kind, of, kind of like the end of a Left 4 Dead level. <laughs> do, do they have any, <laughs> like, do, like do, do they have any incentive? Is, is like a zero sum game where they like all the loot they stop you from taking they can get? Uh, yes. Uh, it's, it's actually a little bit, it, it changed, uh, literally today. There was a, uh, huge content patch because initially, uh, there's also actually a, uh, you have a dark zone level and, uh, dying causes you to lose XP. And initially, um, uh, incident gating combat, uh, basically, uh, marks you as, as, uh, having gone rogue. Okay. And um, 
if you go, uh, you know, until you die. If you go rogue, you lose a lot more XP when you die. But um, the uh, anyone that kills you can do so without consequences. Hmm. So huh. initially, virtually no one went rogue because the punishments were too high. They actually had a patch today to uh, fix that. However, um, or adjust it. Unfortunately, what it actually did is made it so if you went rogue and you died, there were no consequences. <laughs> um, which uh, we saw in an event that the community has apparently taken to referring to as the purge. <laughs> like the movie? Uh, yes, like the movie. Huh. Um, so they've they've now um, now have gotten a another patch out where apparently it's now more balanced because the idea is that you know they're trying to hit the uh that kind of threshold where you know it's not just blatant that you know you know it's not like um those early access mm -hmm. survival games where just everyone dicks over everyone but at the same time that doing so is a viable strategy interesting huh yeah so that that's apparently the end game haven't got there yet um Still really like it. Uh, still really like the atmosphere. Uh, I like. I I still enjoy like walking down the street and having someone from like the uh, uh, open window on the top of our apartment level like start shouting down at me. Oh, just like flavor text kind of stuff. Yeah, there, there's like there's more or less like random encounters kind of with the NPCs, mm -hmm. uh, and like a lot of them are just. Um, you know, people either being, you know, like, you know, kind of yelling at you, like, you know, what are you doing down there? Or, you know, you know, hey, thanks for saving, you know, that sort of thing. But I've I've had one where it was a guy who was just, like, drunk. Hmm. And, <laughs> what? Yeah, of of course I'm drunk. I, uh, it's a war you'd zone. be drunk, too. Yeah, you, know, you know, just kind of slurring <laughs> at me. Yeah. Uh, I, I've had one that I think maybe was a... um wife trying to talk down her husband from jumping okay that's intense wow. yeah there's um there there's some uh uh some fa fairly dark moments in the game um it's actually uh what what they kind of neat uh neat things they they have been able to do is the the enemy factions uh i feel like they do a really good job of um oh uh, kind of coming up with ways to you know this is, you know, mostly a serious game. So how are we going to actually have interesting enemies? So like the main, uh, the main faction I've been, um, uh, fighting is basically a, uh, group of, um, like city engineers and sanitation workers that have decided that the, the only way to save the city is to basically to literally burn out the infection. Okay. To just, you know, uh, you know, basically ho homemade flamethrowers and just, just, you know, going Burn everything. Yeah. Around and like torching the refugee camps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so like they and 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 that's like a really good job to ha way to have um, enemies that are, you know, all equipped with flamethrowers, uh, you know, kind of these cackling monsters while still being uh, sort of realistic. Yeah. Not, not just being completely fantasy. Right, right. But uh, that does, uh, I, I guess, fortunately or unfortunately, create some fairly, uh, there's some fairly horrific cutscenes and stuff like that. Yeah. So. Huh. But, yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Well, I want to be mindful of your time. I don't want you to be late for work or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, no. Um, cool. Any other, does uh, Dennis, Ben, do you have any questions for David about that? No, I'll, I'll look forward to hearing how things go when you're actually in the end game content. Yeah. 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 It will be, be interesting. So cool. All right. Um, yeah. Later, David. Hey, have a great evening, you guys. Yep. Peace. See ya. See, See ya, Dave. Dave. All right. Uh, Dennis, since you were away last week, let's go to you. Yeah, I've got I've got one new game that I've been playing and it's a big one. I, for the first time in my life, tried World of Warcraft. Oh, wow. That seems like something you would have tried before. No, I, I just never, never found the time or the uh, right incentive to, um, to, to try it. 
Um, but I finally found one. Uh, Hearthstone is giving a free, like, alternate character portrait if you can reach level 20 in World of Warcraft. <laughs> in one <Weird>. day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which well, might I, actually be possible. I don't... I, it, I, 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 it is. I, I, someone said it's a... If you, if you kind of don't... If you kind of take your time... It, else. It you don't defecate. Is five hours, I think, to get to level 20. Mm, okay. Uh, Which is still a pretty big investment of time, but I was like, ah, uh, you know... I. I'll try it. Like, here's my excuse. <laughs> um, so I'm I'm at about uh, level 11 out of 20. So in terms of you know levels, I'm halfway there. In terms of actual like time, I don't know. Like I, I know I know the second half will take a, a bit longer than the first half. Um, and I also hope that the second half is significantly better than the first half, because guys, Welcome. I. I didn't like it at all. I thought it was actually <laughs> really, really bad. Huh. Like, I, I made some non-meaningful cosmetic choices when creating my character. And then from that moment until literally level 10, there was not a single meaningful choice for me to make. Not one. <laughs> I, I mean, you could decide which order you would kill the 10 doodads in. Yeah. Ex <laughs> to get the thing. <laughs> No, even but even then, like assuming you can find different doodads to kill, usually they just kind of laid out in a path in front of you. No, it's all the same, but just like you know, which order, like you can go front to back or back to front. Oh God, it's so bad. Like and... I would recommend front to back, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I don't want to min max it here. Uh, <laughs> but no, like there's there's like you know there's an exclamation point in front of you, and you click on the exclamation point, and then you go to the blue area. And that's, yeah, you get to choose which order you kill the doodads in. But the, like, literally the world just handholds you from one spot to the next all the way through. Um, and there's, for, for it being such like a vast open world, it feels really, really empty. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe I was just on at a time that not a lot of other people are on, but like I didn't, none of the quests required you to have multiple people. Um, there wasn't really any incentive or apparent reward for being in a party, which, hello, that's what, an MMO is for. Um, so I, I, I didn't interact with someone else a single time during those first 10 levels. Wow. Um, just went through and, and, you know, to the game's credit, it kept me moving along at a good clip. Like I always knew where I was going next and had something to do, but in an MMO, the do part is just clicking on things. Right. And there's only so much a beautiful world can do for you. If it feels just empty and like the only things in it are the very specific, you know, uh, guideposts that they set out for you. Hmm. So just, I, 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 and maybe there was some kind of hype built up in my mind for a while, but it just, it let me down in a really, really big way. Um, especially compared to Guild Wars 2, where I feel like from the beginning, creating your character, you like set your character's backstory and that has all these interesting impacts. And um, there's just, you know, every time you level up, there's interesting choices to to make in terms of what skills you're taking or what where you're spending your hero points and that sort of thing. Like literally, I would level up to a certain point in World, War, World of Warcraft and it would just drop the next skill in my tray. <laughs> like I, I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to go to a trainer. I didn't have to like wow, pick the new. two skills. It just drops it in your tray for you. So, huh. so th this is where my experience diverges from yours because it's been yeah. it's been a good six years since I played World of Warcraft. That last what was played, the last expansion that you had, Cataclysm. Okay. Um, and so, like, I think even then you still had like some choice over like trees and uh, like, like you know skill trees or which uh, disciplines you wanted for your class, like. Yeah. I, yeah. I made a choice at, at, at level 10. Again, the first real choice in the game um, on whether or not I wanted to be a tank, a healer, or a warrior, or like a fighter, or whatever they call it. Um, and wait a minute, you didn't then, have a class until level 10? Exactly. Yeah. Well, I chose, <clears throat> I chose the class. I guess it was maybe a, because I was a monk. Maybe this was a specialization within the class. Maybe. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I don't, I don't know for monks. Yeah. So, but, but again, like, okay, I chose my class at the very beginning in character select, but that, like, again, that, that was, then there was a 10 level gap in any kind of choice making. Like, even, hmm. even if I wanted to run around the world, there was nothing to do in it. Like, the, the, the villagers in these areas are literally just carbon copies stamped around. <laughs> they don't, they have like one line that every single villager shares. Um, and even, even I would go to like, plot significant characters 
uh, and just click on them again to see like if they did anything when I wasn't getting a quest from them, and they didn't. <laughs> like that some some of them had flavor text, but a lot of them just stood there, like couldn't even interact with them. Uh, so that it was just this huge hit to feeling like this was a a living, breathing world. Right. So I, you know, I'm gonna get it out. I'm gonna get my Hearthstone. I'm, I'm playing. I'm playing Warcraft Heroes of Hearthstone right now. Is what I'm doing. Um, Dennis, have and, you played The Witcher Three by any chance? No. I need. I need. To, I need a new game. So maybe. Maybe that's where I need to go next. If you're looking for like a well-developed world, that might scratch that itch. Yeah. Yeah. No. Right now, I'm just looking for a character portrait. <laughs> yeah. um, but the the other so so it spent all this like and again maybe there was some hype but it spent all this goodwill that way and then i finally get to level 11 um where it like sends you off into the real world right and i chose a side because the the i was playing as a pandaren or pandalaren or pangolin or whatever they are <laughs> if you're playing as a pangolin, pangolin. <laughs> <laughs> there are pangolins in pandaria which i thought was interesting what yeah, like literally, they're like little, little, almost like armadillo type of things running around. Yeah, little scale rabbits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but so you know, it sends me to the main world, and I choose: do I go alliance or horde? Because that 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 race can be either. Um, and it you know sends me off to the starting area, and I land in the starting area next to this buddy that I've had for most of the beginner quest, which great, cool. Um, I cash in my quest there. Uh, with him to like go to the real world and then it's like hey you've got another quest with him he's got the the exclamation point above his head and i click on him but before i can hit accept quest the loading screen pops up again and it drops me off in a different location within the horde like starting city so i didn't get the quest i had no direction of where to go um and i just spent some time wandering aimlessly and and this again just hammered home how empty the world feels like devoid of this main hallway, let's call it what it was, that that kind of shuttled me through the first 10 levels, I couldn't find anything interesting to do. Yeah. And that that was just like that. I was like, what am I doing here? And so, you know, I, I stopped playing at that point. I haven't gone back yet since I looked up and apparently there is a like an NPC that was right next to me that I missed. So maybe my bad. I still had the main quest line drop, though. So I think I think that was a glitch. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I guess I, I'm very disappointed after whatever it's been 10 years, literally 10 years. Yeah. yeah. Um, and that's just, just 12, since 12, I mean, <laughs> 12, yeah. Oh my God. Um, so over a decade of build up, and this is what I got that, yeah. that just kind of sucks. Well, I mean, so two things there, like you're probably stepping into, I mean, like, yes, it, it, it is older and there's only so much they can do with, with their, I mean, like it's. It's weird to compare it to Guild Wars 2, which was developed so recently, right? Yeah. Maybe yeah. not maybe not weird. Like it's it, it's it's still a comparison, right? But like it's going to feel substantially more primitive, right? Yes. No, it, that that's very true. Not not that WoW needs my defending, but also <laughs> the other thing, like this is a shame because all that you're saying like lends credence to the usual kind of a uh, chorus that comes up whenever you say the single player in wow is boring. And then somebody comes back and says, it doesn't start until you're level 100. Yeah. And I saw a couple <laughs> of people say that and that was really, really disappointing. Yeah. Um, Cause it, apparently there's a great game there. You just have to invest 60 hours to, to play it. And yeah, 60 hours, you know, like that seems like on the low side. Like I know that they've like right. fast, they've fast tracked, you know, single player leveling, like to the point where it's kind of obviated. But like, I remember having a lot of fun, like with mid level play in WoW or in you know specifically like EverQuest. But all of that was in social context too. Yeah. And in, well, and I'll, I'll channel David, who I know has spoken before about how there's kind of this the badge of honor of having to grind your way there, right? Like the the you know maybe the real meat of the game is is hard to get to, but that's kind of what makes it so sweet is the people who are there kind of all have this shared experience to get there. That you, you yeah, know, you are a brotherhood that has put in the time that you you guys have put in this effort to get here, um, and ever that means everyone kind of belongs, right? Yeah. But but that also means that there are pressures for them to continue developing the game for people who don't value their time. Yes, yes, that's, <laughs> so that like, is the dark side of that. So it just you know like yes, it is it is a self selected few that all want something that you know to to, to my sensibilities is tedious and terrible. Yeah, which you you can buy a boost to level one hundred, right? Right, I think so. That maybe if you if you really, but that see that that's weird to me, because then that says, hey, new player coming in, 
we want you to skip probably hundreds of hours of content, you know, uh, you know, off the bat, which mm-hmm. is just crazy to me. Or it yeah, seems like it devalues the, the people who actually did it without paying it. Yeah. Yeah. So, hmm. uh, like I, 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 it is a hearthstone thing. I must have it. I will continue. <laughs> playing. I, I, I am hopeful that now I am in the main world and you know, that I've uh, will hopefully be able to log back in and get my bearings now that it's, I've, it's been pointed out to me where I should go. Right. Um, I hope it will get significantly better. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, you know, this, this beginning area was just that, like it was, it felt like the, the handcuffs were on because they were, but we'll see. Yeah. Oh, huh, well, I'm sorry you're having a bad time with that, but I mean, at least the end is in sight. Yes. Yes. Hmm. Um, and that's, that's really the only big new thing I've been playing. Uh, I, I alluded earlier to kind of creating and testing out this gimmick deck for Hearthstone, uh, which has been a lot of fun. Um, but more on that after I've actually, uh, played it live. Yeah. Uh, let's see here, Ben, how about you? Okay. I, yeah, I got two um, Knights of the Republic uh, I've done a little bit more on. I'm like before the final like planet, pl- final chapter, I guess. So I've done all the four core planets. Um, so I'm just kind of maxing out my characters like items before I take the point of no return plunge. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's fine. That's whatever. I, there's not much to say about that since it's a 12-year-old game. But uh <laughs> But um, yeah, the other game I've been playing, which I think I alluded to earlier, is uh, Stardew Valley. Is I got that and started playing that. Oh, did um, nice. Yeah. So upon recommendation, I know a couple of the people, the listeners of the podcast, have recommended it, and then uh, one of my old friends back in Vegas also recommended it. So, um, so I picked it up, started playing it. It's kind of interesting. It's I mean, it's very much in the style of like Pokemon or like an old like uh, you know like sixteen bit type game. And it has, you know, the same sort of uh, sound style to it. Um, but it's, I, I I don't have an opinion on it yet. I'm still trying to feel it out. Um, but, I mean, the premise of it is you are somebody whose grandfather died and left you something <laughs> to, o- to open once life is getting you down. Or, like, when you're tired of, you know, like, whatever. And so... Uh, it cuts to, you know, somebody who's, you know, like working at a corporate job and they decide to open it and it, this grandfather had willed him a plot of land to become a farmer at. And so the idea is he goes out and your goal is to just farm this land and meet the people that are in the town, um, at least so far as I can tell. And so that's what you do. Like you have an energy <laughs> bar and you have a plot of land and there's i think three different tools you have to start out with a game where you and there's three different types of items on your land there's plants that you can cut with a scythe there's rocks that you can uh i guess pick with a pickaxe i don't know if that's correct <laughs> verb or not and then there's uh like logs and trees that you can cut down uh with an axe um and so all of those give you different goods you can use those goods you can either sell them outright or you can use them to uh build certain things um but it's very open-ended right now so um as i mentioned before with david you do have like objectives if you want to pursue them but it's things that are like uh i think one of the first objectives in the game is to literally meet the townspeople in that in this village um but they give you no other direction besides that. And so it's it's very open-ended. You just walk around, and if you find people and talk to them, you do. And if not, you don't. But everybody has their own schedule for the day. Um, so there's certain times they're available to talk to, and there's other times where they'll kind of be walled off and you can't really get to them. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's kind of an interesting dynamic. Um, yeah. It's almost like a second life simulator win a style of pokemon <laughs> but with farming do, do you have any history with the harvest moon series i do not no. um i never played those for ps2 no yeah i mean like going even going back to the uh to the snes like this is by all appearances a a, a harvest moon ass harvest moon game <laughs> gotcha but with like you know modern translation and scrutable systems and stuff like that mm-hmm. which is not like to, to, to speak against it no i'm 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 bummed out that uh steam workshop is not uh, is not uh available for this because i was going to go in and make a funny farm campaign adapting the 1988 chevy chase film 
<laughs> to video game porn <laughs> for once and for all. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> that one goes out there for all the funny farm fans. <laughs> 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 oh gosh uh so do you do you see this having legs for you we'll see i've only spent i think an hour and a half on it mm-hmm. so i'll probably i'll probably give it a good you know like five to ten hours and we'll see how it goes yeah. so um i mean the i mean the thing that i haven't figured out yet or not is like is this farmville or is this something more than that you know because if it's just like uh you know like maximize the system so you get better at the system like I don't know. I don't know if, if that's all it is, then I don't. I don't know how far I can go on it, but yeah. we'll see. Sure. the The thing that I found when I was playing Harvest Moon on SNES for WAF was that like it offered enough paths that like if I see a system, I'm going to try and optimize it. But like, there's the socialization, you know, side of it that is like not like directly intuitive. And God knows, it's not directly intuitive on the SNES. But like, it feels like there's enough option for you that if it's like yeah, the, like the, the farming path is about systems, but you, it can turn into something else, you know, that is about yeah. like interaction or romance or, you know, like economy or ex- exploration. Like it, it seems like that's available in Stardew Valley based on what I've seen. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah, apparently you can pick flowers and give them to people. One of, one of the weirder mechanics of the game is like every person in the town will have a bedroom that has a door attached to it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And if you try and go through it, it'll give you a message that says you are not like good enough friends with this person to go into their bedroom. Doesn't matter who the person is. Like it says <laughs> that for everyone, but it sometimes has very creepy results. Even your own. God, I'm yeah. so yeah. tired. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't slept yeah. in years. Go home. So that was one of the interesting details. The, uh, the first like day of playthrough that I had, is I didn't notice the energy meter, so I just kept having the dude do farm work, and he passed out. And so he, <laughs> and then there's like a text that it said that like, oh, you went to the hospital, and like this is your bill, so it cost you, you know, a certain <laughs> amount of money. I was like, oh, that's like a good percentage of the money that I have, so I can't do that anymore. But mm-hmm. I don't know. That was just like an interesting wrinkle that they had in it. But yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I need to, I need to get on that. Are you playing Maybe. that with uh with like mouse and keyboard controller? Because like I, I mouse and keyboard. Okay, I'm not I'm not sure if this is a game I can play uh like in my living room. Gotcha. Yeah. Which doesn't mean a whole lot. I can play it in my office too. So. Yeah. I just wanted to decide how I should engage with it. <laughs> well, yeah, I, it'll be cool if you get it. Then we can compare notes. I, I have it, so we so we could if I if I can get around to playing it. Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah. And I have one other game I forgot to mention. I played a lot of Rocket League over the weekend as well. Mm. So I finally have a computer with a solid enough internet connection that uh, there's no latency or lag when I'm playing Rocket League. So oh, nice. Did a lot of that. Does that make a difference for you? Yeah. Yeah. It. Yeah. It <laughs> makes it a, an actual competitive game. So, yeah. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Hmm. Pursuant to our previous conversation, I'm now looking at a whole page full of images of baby pangolins. So nice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's huh. So do you feel like you you were playing the wrong game before? With the Rocket League? Yeah. Yeah, you can't play it if you have lag. Like, it's just you're yeah. you're kind of useless if 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 you like sometimes like uh people's speeds will like rubber band where like it'll lag out for a second but then it'll be fine but yeah no it was unplayable previously so mm. yeah yeah but i i would heartily recommend that game since that i've it's the most time per dollar in <laughs> of any of the games that i own hmm. so, yeah nice um, so I'm going to do mine. Uh, I have not played very much of it, but I have played Salt and Sanctuary. Um, what is this? Interesting. So this is a side-scrolling game that is so similar to Dark Souls that it should be legally actionable. <laughs> um, so it's hard. Is that an unfortunate thing or is that a good thing? I mean, it's fine. Like, so here's here's the thing. Like, it's really hard to to extract the like the like the soulsiness of it from like a uh, from for like for, from an honest kind of appraisal of this. 
mm-hmm. uh, like you know uh, uh, of, of the game right so it's kind of like oh it's a uh, it's it's side scrolling it's like side scrolling souls but like i don't know if that sells it short or not um right and like most of the like actual most of the stuff that's really overt and like not as interesting really is the aesthetic like yeah it has this muted color palette uh it's it's made by ska studios this you know company that's kind of known for very stylistic games um and you know it's got this nice kind of hand-drawn style i'm not crazy about the animation but whatever um and it has you know it has a kind of storytelling through item descriptions and things like that like that like presentationally it is it is very souls mm-hmm. um and like there is an element of it that does feel pretty souls like as well you have you know you you have you have uh souls which is just like salt uh, which I don't know what that has to do with leveling up uh maybe there will be something uh provided in a description uh to 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 understand but it it functions in very much the same way aside from it's uh it's it's your experience points and you can lose them on 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 death but uh Mm -hmm. you have you have gold like they're not explicitly currency um it also has sanctuaries uh which are like your bonfires right your ability you you can rest at them and restore your health uh restoring items and uh and save and you know spawn there when you you know when, when, when you die again um and so like the, those things are there the more interesting sides of it are how they kind of adapt it to a to you know to a 2d kind of, kind of flow while still keeping some of the stuff that feels pretty good so like you can look at this and if there was no if there was no souls game for a point of comparison a this game wouldn't exist because it feels very much like a quote of dark souls mm-hmm. um but uh it would feel like a castlevania game um, just because it is like a non-linear exploration based, you know, side scrolling platformer uh, that is very heavily weighted towards like this methodical uh, kind of combat. So like if you put souls out of your mind, this plays and feels like a Castlevania game where you can block uh, where there are combos, um, you know, as you kind of vary back and forth between between strong and weak attacks and where you have the ability to like roll out of the way. And mm. it messes with the uh, the Castlevania formula by having this souls like um, instant respawn wherever you go. Uh, it gets around that by really leaning heavily on uh, shortcuts. Like very explicitly, the first one that you can get is uh, kicking down a ladder so you can skip a portion of a level. Like <sighs> it is, it is shameless. <laughs> Which <laughs> it's fine, whatever. Um, I'm having fun with it. It's difficult. Uh, my worst enemy right now is uh, is is uh, muscle memory, just because you attack with the face buttons, which is not something I'm used to. But there are still mm-hmm. like combat things, like the uh, like the roll button or the block button that are on shoulder buttons, and also like item use and stuff like that. Like it just feels wrong. Like it's it's off just enough to throw you off <laughs> if you are playing something that explicitly quotes this thing you're very familiar with. That's how they avoid it being legally actionable. I suppose. I, I, and understand. I'm not saying people. I'm not saying they should be sued for it. Mm-hmm. Um, like, but it just. It really is very, very close. Uh, mm-hmm. I feel bad because I've only played like the first, the first level. I've played. Uh, I've played through the fetid banquet. <laughs> which <Ooh. laughs> yeah they're really leaning That's into fancy. the uh the the area names um and i fought uh uh what is it the sodden knight or something like that like you know, the, 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 they get it and like a boss fight like, like like a 2d souls boss fight is fun like it was tough you know because like you understand the patterns but like you have a wider vocabulary than you would normally have in like a castlevania or a similar kind of game like there's just more you can do so mm-hmm. like i good how do, how does the rolling work in 2d because it seems like it definitely limits your options right you have two directions yeah you have two directions um i found that you could like rolling roll- into them is kind of questionable though yeah like it, it definitely puts you at risk um i it was a little finicky but i was able to like roll past enemies that i otherwise would have uh bounced into okay. um and also like rolling gets you access to invincibility frames so if there's an attack that you can't explicitly block, um, rolling at the right time will give you frames of invincibility so you can just kind of like have their weapon phase through you. So it's a way to dodge. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And like you can choose, depending on your weapon, to go like two-handed uh, or like one hand and <laughs> stuff like that. Like it is down to that level of control. So it's it's a lot to get used to. 
Um, but yeah, I just haven't played enough of it, despite like a lot of people really, really wanting me to. Like, I understand, you know, I do a I do a Dark Souls <laughs> show. But, like, people, and, and and here's the thing: like, if they had announced like in January <laughs> uh, when this game was coming out, we totally could have planned to put it in. However because they announced its actual release date like a week before it came out like we had already not only planned which games we were going to talk about you know we're we're only going to release one show a week um but also we'd already played the games sure yeah. and so like we're probably not going to talk about this on bonfire side chat for like a year mm-hmm you know, it's going to be the next off season, probably, unless there's, you know, some other compelling, you know, place to put it. Um, and so, like, getting a lot of messages like, hey, if you play, it feels like the like the undertale of Souls games a little bit. Like, <laughs> hey, have you played Salt and Sanctuary? Like, I dog trust like I want to. But it's just it's it's not on my front burger right now because <laughs> like everything is it, it, it has all been for for written. You know, all of this has been planned. Blah. Mm hmm. But it's cool. Um, I'm excited to, to dig more into it. This is a PS4 only game right now. Um, I think that there is going to be a, a a Vita release here in the near future, and also a Steam release as well. Uh, and those can only help the game. I kind of hope when it comes out on Vita, it's cross by because I can totally see you jamming on this um, on uh, on the go. Nice. Yeah. Like Dennis, as the as as the other person here who has played, you know, a, a lot of soul stuff. Like, like, do you have any questions about this? No, I mean, I think you covered it pretty well. Uh, I think the crossplay thing will be interesting, right? Because mm-hmm. we've never gotten souls on the go, right? Um, however, I I wonder how much the souls games will, or like a, a game like this, would lend itself to bite sized consumption. Um, I guess I guess what I'm trying to ask is when you hit the pause button, does it actually pause? No, no, it does not. Really? So it cribs, it cribs even that much? Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, like, maybe there's a way around it, because, like, this is a multiplayer game. I understand there are invasions and co-op and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I-, I could kind of see, uh, I, c- I could kind of see, like, if you were playing single player and offline, maybe being able to get around that by pressing the uh, the the PlayStation button on your Vita to like just do a hard system pause. But yeah. like, I don't know how that would work, or if the Vita version would have online play at all. Uh yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I, I I can't see the Vita ever allowing a game where you hit the PlayStation button and it does not pause. Yeah. So just, I think that you're you're kind of. Um, beholden to if it wasn't for the pause right like if, if it wasn't for the possibility that the pause button would do nothing it like a souls game might be like a souls like game might be a good fit because you are doing these things in these tight loops like it's really easy to just put down a portable system if you get frustrated right yeah, when, that's when, true. when you're in these kind of like ever expanding five seven ten fifteen thirty minute loops all the way up till the you know till, till the boss right you know, I think these are more bite size maybe than people think, but mm-hmm. outside of those artificial limitations, you know, or within those artificial limitations, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it would be that successful. Like, I can't imagine sitting pinned to my PS Vita, <laughs> you no. know, because I no. play that in bed. And like when I decide I want to go to sleep, God damn it, I want to pause and then pick up in the morning. Or when I drop the Vita on my face and realize, okay, I've been awake for too long. Yes. And I realize I've been <laughs> asleep for minutes. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So Salt and Sanctuary. Um, I intend to play more of this. Cool. I'm glad you enunciated the last time because I was looking for Salt and Sanctuary. Is it Salt and Sanctuary or Salt and Sanctuary? Salt and Sanctuary. All right. Yeah. Skype it probably isn't doing us any favors either. That's all good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. So do you guys want to button it up? Think so. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, and thanks to David. Uh, he had to go, but uh, we appreciated him hopping on with us for the for, for the first portion of the show. Um, yeah. So in terms of admin stuff, uh, if you're listening to this uh, in a timely fashion, be sure to check out DuckSpring. That is duckfeed.tv slash DuckSpring uh, to watch some of our uh, community stream games in support of the Transactive Gender Center, um, which is a great cause. Um, and, uh, also, you know, 
watch them and support them and go into the chat and say, hey, what's up? Because some of those longer shifts can get pretty demoralizing. (laughs) 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 Yeah. Um, But otherwise, you know the usual deal. Um, Every Friday when this comes out, I also put up the uh, the duck feed uh, news updates and stuff like some of those some of those posts are really big with a bunch of stuff like there's a there's a t-shirt for crick farms um which is an abject suffering running joke um we have uh we have a couple of polls active at the moment um just a just a bunch of cool stuff like that things that we would normally say at the end of these episodes are kind of being shunted into that as a persistent and shareable way for you guys to uh to engage with our brand <sighs> Hey-o. So Cole, let's, let's back off of that real quick. <laughs> if if the listener or a podcast member wants to suggest a shirt, how could they do that? Uh, they could uh, go to duckfeed.tv slash contact. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and 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 we will talk after the show, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there anything I'm missing in terms of uh, in terms of admin? I don't think so. Okay. So I have been Cole Ross at Cole Ross on Twitter. I've been Dennis Furia at D Furia on Twitter. I've been Ben Merkel at Merkelizer on Twitter. Yep. And uh, stick around for some titles. All right, does anybody have ones they want to throw in? I have literally one. Literally one. Ben. Uh, Pop linguistics. Okay. (laughs) All right. I had pop linguistics as well. Okay. Um, I also had the No Pauls Club. (laughs) I like No Pauls Club. I I did not get that one. Uh, So I also have pop linguistics. Um, I have grind to her tones. (laughs) Uh, precision engineer dopamine machine. Minesweeper makes me anxious. Mm-hmm. And front to back. I think pop linguistic gets it. Like I think so. Yeah, yeah. I made all three of ours. Like it's hard to say no to. Yeah, it'd, it'd be a nice addition. You have pop linguistic in general puzzles. So. <laughs> yep. 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 Yeah. And Sugarbone, like we're, 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 we're I, I love, I love humor <laughs> about creating characters. <laughs> oh man. <laughs>